the idea of doing it as a jam was quite an inspired thing, and it was quite a good jam. I mean, it, it, I think it started as a medley with two other songs. They just extended it, and they extended it and extended it, and it was decided that, um, you know, Gene and Skip would do this, the rhythm section would be allowed to do these elaborate runs and, and let it go, and McGuinn would come in almost like a guest star. It was a wonderful tour de force in concerts. I mean, everybody, you know, it was the highlight of all the Birds concerts you went to as well, this wonderful, you know, epic centrepiece. just have fun with it, yeah, the live version, and uh, or we try to have fun with it and kind of let it go where it, it was different every night. Clarence would come up with some, you know, some favorite rhythm lick, and then I'd join in, and we'd try to take it from there, and then Skip would come in with, he was studying Nietzsche and Shoshu Buddhism at that point, and chanting every night, and reading his chant book, and, which had a lot of... Uh, uh, interesting cadences to the chants and so he he put those to the bass and that would inspire us and we there were times when it would just take off and like I say it have a life of its own um, the problem with with uh, skip and I doing 16 minutes or a long bass and drum solo is that the other lads uh, grew to depend on that for a break and they might wait in the wings a little longer than they should wait. And, uh, you know, Skip and I would look at each other and say, Good God, this must be hell. These guys are not coming back and we're done. We're going to have to take it somewhere else. Skip was very uh, spontaneous. And one night at the Fillmore, Fillmore East, I particularly remember him throwing his bass in the air, way up in the air. He had a long cord on it because he would prance back and forth on the stage. And uh, in the middle of our drum bass solo, he, uh, I, I went around the drums and hit the, uh, the crash to see his bass launching up into the air with a cord trailing off behind it. And there was this, it seemed like a, a time slowed down. And I thought, what's going to happen now? And it came right back into his hands, right on the beat, and the whole house was on their feet. It, it was amazing. It's the only time he ever did it. Never did it again. I said, when are you going to throw your bass up in here? He said, oh, it's spontaneous. It either happens or it doesn't happen. 